chapter 4, A Perfect Man. Ephesians 4, verses 1 to 3, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The prisoner of the Lord, Paul pleads with the body of Christ to be Christ-like while he is incarcerated. Walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. We have a vocation as a member of the body of Christ. We are not to sit, but to serve the body. We are to be active in making all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Ephesians 4 verses 4 to 6, there is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all, one body, the body of Christ. Colossians 1 verse 24, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, one spirit, the Holy Spirit, one hope of your calling, the blessed hope, a.k.a. the rapture. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 to 54. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 to 18, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words, One Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. This title is used 68 times by Paul in his 13 epistles. One faith, the faith of Jesus Christ. Galatians 2.16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. One baptism. Paul is speaking about being baptized by the Holy Ghost, not being baptized with water or with the Holy Ghost like believing Israel was in the Gospels and in the early Acts period. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. Ephesians 4 verses 7 to 10, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Psalm 68 verse 18, Thou hast ascended on high, thou hast led captivity captive, thou hast received gifts for men, yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. He led captivity captive. Many believe this happened when he ascended up on high at his resurrection, when there was a great earthquake, Matthew 27 verses 51 to 53, 
And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. The graves were opened, Luke 24, verse 2, and the bodies of many saints arose after the resurrection and appeared to many in Jerusalem. Who was it that was held captive back then? And who did he give gifts to at that time? We know that the prophecy program is not the mystery program concerning the body of Christ. We also know that David was not revealing any part of the mystery concerning the body of Christ in Psalm 68, verse 18 to Israel. All of the mystery program was kept a secret, hid in God, until it was gradually revealed to the Apostle Paul beginning one year after Jesus' resurrection. Romans 16 verse 25, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 8, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. David was referring to the captives in paradise that were in the heart of the earth. Christ told the thief on the cross that he would be there with him later that day. Luke 23 verse 43, And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Paul is telling us of Christ's glorious triumph over the devil and his angels as he led captivity, the saints who had died before the resurrection, captive in paradise to their new abode in heaven. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 4, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Revelation 2 verse 7, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Ephesians 4 verse 11, And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, just as Christ led captivity captive and gave gifts unto those saints that were taken into the paradise of God in heaven. He also gave gifts for a while unto the body of Christ during its infancy to take it to full maturity. 1 Corinthians 12 verses 1 to 4 now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye you know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. When the word of God was completed, then that which was in part the sign gifts were done away with. This is why Paul was not able to heal people at the end of his ministry. The mature believer had their childish gifts taken away because they were no longer needed, nor are they in operation anymore. Apostles sent ones. Ephesians 2 verse 20, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Ephesians 3 verse 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Prophets. Barnabas and Saul were prophets. Acts 13 verse 1, Now there are in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Manan, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. 1 Corinthians 12 verses 28 to 29, and God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, 1 Corinthians 14 verses 29 to 32, let the prophets speak two or three, 
and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Evangelists. Second Timothy 4 verse 5, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Pastors and teachers, notice the order of the gifts given. Paul tells us that God gave the body first apostles and prophets, which is because the word of God was not complete. Then the permanent offices are given, which are evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And they are given to the body for a specific reason, to edify it. Acts 13 verse 1, Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene and Manan, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 28, And God had set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Ephesians 4 verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, the perfecting of the saints. The word perfecting means to make one mature or complete. Ephesians 4 verse 13, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The unity of the faith, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers were given to the body of Christ to bring members of the body into the unity of the faith while we didn't have a completed Bible. They only saw through a glass darkly. It wasn't until Paul wrote, N.D. Timothy, that the body of Christ had the complete word of God at their disposal. Today there are no more new apostles and prophets for the body of Christ, with new revelations coming out because the word of God is complete. So those supernatural sign gifts that were in part while the church didn't have a completed canon of scripture have been done away with because that which is perfect, complete, is come. We now have the completed word of God. 1 Corinthians 13 verses 8 to 12, charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now, we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known, the knowledge of the Son of God. Ephesians 1 verses 17 to 23, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us ward who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all unto a perfect man, a fully mature believer who understands all the doctrines that were dispensed to the Apostle Paul for the body of Christ today. Verse above. Ephesians 4 verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, 
whereby they lie in wait to deceive. First Timothy 4 verses 1 to 16. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness, for bodily exercise profiteth little. But godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers, in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine, Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself, and unto the doctrine, continue in them. For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself, and them that hear thee. Ephesians 4 verse 15 to 16, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. When all parts of the body of Christ are functioning properly with Christ as the head, then the body can receive what each part needs to continue the work God has for us. Ephesians 4 verses 17 to 19, this I say therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. It is clear from this portion of scripture that Ephesians is written with the Gentiles in mind. Ephesians 4 verses 20 to 24, But ye have not so learned Christ. If so, be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, the, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. The old man is crucified with Christ. He was the servant of sin. Romans 6 verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Colossians 3 verse 9, lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day, Colossians 3 verse 10, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him.
The new man, he is dead to sin. He is the servant of God, and he is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Colossians 3 verse 10. Ephesians 4 verse 25 to 28. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing, which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. We can be angry over sin and its consequences because that is part of our sin nature, but because we have been redeemed, the new man is not to react out of anger. Ephesians 4 verses 29 to 30. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Sealed unto the day of redemption. The one new man is a member of the body of Christ and has eternal security. Romans 8 verse 23, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. Ephesians 1 verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Ephesians 4 verses 31 to 32, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. With all malice, wickedness, carnality, the deeds of the flesh and sinful activities. Chapter 5 a great mystery. Ephesians 5 verses 1 to 2, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. A sweet-smelling savor, a sacrifice that was acceptable unto God, Genesis 8 verse 21, And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. Exodus 29 verse 18, And thou shalt burn the whole ram upon the altar, it is a burnt offering unto the Lord. It is a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Ephesians 5 verses 3 to 6, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you, as becometh saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Let no man deceive you with vain words, empty words, the wrath of God. This is speaking about God's ultimate wrath in hell. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. The children of disobedience. This is a reference to lost people. Ephesians 2 verse 2, Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Colossians 3 verse 6, For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Ephesians 5 verses 7 to 10, Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. The fruit of the Spirit, things that the Spirit of God produces in us that believe the gospel. 
Galatians 5, verses 20, 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Ephesians 5, verses 11 to 14. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Psalms 44 verses 22 to 26. Yea, for thy sake are we killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Awake! Why sleepest thou, O Lord? Arise, cast us not off forever. Wherefore hidest thou thy face, and forgettest our affliction and our oppression? For our soul is bowed down to the dust, our belly cleaveth unto the earth. Arise for our help, and redeem us for thy mercy's sake. Ephesians 5 verses 15 to 17. See then that you walk circumspectly not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. The will of the Lord, this is God's eternal purpose for the body of Christ today. It is not about who you should marry or where you should work or live. Ephesians 5 verses 18 to 20, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be filled with the Spirit. This is accomplished by practicing verses 19 through the end of this epistle. Ephesians 5 verses 21 to 23, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Christ is the head of the church. The church is a body. Whose head is Christ? The head is where all direction comes from for the body. Ephesians 5 verses 24 to 26. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might sanctify and cleanse it, set it apart for his use with the washing of water by the word. The word of God can cleanse the worldly thinking out of our minds. Ephesians 5 verse 27, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish, holy and without blemish. The words blemish and blame are the same Greek words. Ephesians 1 verse 4, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Ephesians 5 verses 28 to 32, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. They too shall be one flesh. The church is literally Christ's body, and it is made up of Jew and Gentile in one body, just like a husband and wife are one body with one head. This is a great mystery. The church is a great mystery. The Gentile in times past had to be a proselyte to Judaism to have salvation. Now both Jew and Gentile are one in Christ by faith. 
Ephesians 5 verse 33, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. God took something that was familiar marriage to explain a new mystery known as the body of Christ. It isn't introduced here, nor did it begin here as some teach, but it is further explained here. Chapter 6, Put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6 verses 1 to 3 children. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth, which is the first commandment with promise. The promise is found in verse 3. Exodus 20 verse 12, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Colossians 3 verse 20 Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Ephesians 6 verse 4 And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Provoke not your children to wrath, to anger, Colossians 3 verse 21, Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Ephesians 6 verses 5 to 8, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart as unto Christ, not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service, as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh. This reference would be synonymous with employer and employee relationships today. However, this scripture is referring to actual slavery here. Colossians 3 verse 22 servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Israel was in slavery to Egypt, Assyria, and Babylon. Plus, they also were permitted to have servants or to become servants only to pay off debts. Israel was never allowed by God to have slaves like what went on in the United States. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord. This is speaking about receiving a reward at the judgment seat of Christ. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 17 if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 14, Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done whether it be good or bad. Ephesians verse 9, And ye masters, do the same things unto them for bearing threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him, your master also is in heaven. The word master here is capitalized, meaning deity. We must learn to treat all as if they were Christ himself, and not lord over people with threats of being fired. Ephesians 6 verses 10 to 12, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The wiles of the devil. The word wiles is speaking about the devil's methods. The Greek word is the word methodia. Putting on the whole armor of God is synonymous with putting on the new man from Ephesians 4 verse 24. Principalities. Archangels. Romans 8 verse 38, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come. The Greek word for principalities is arche. A prince is second only to the king. 
that Satan is called the prince of the power of the air. Ephesians 2 verse 2, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Uh, Revelation 12, verse 7, And there was war in heaven, that Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, powers, the superhuman forces of Satan, fallen angels. Romans 8, verse 38, and Revelation 12, verse 7, The rulers of the darkness of this world Satan is called the prince of the power of the air. Ephesians 2, verse 2, and Revelation 12, verse 7. Spiritual wickedness, fallen angelic beings that actively oppose God. High places, celestial or heavenly places. Ephesians 1, verses 3, 22, verse 6, 3, verse 10, and Revelation 12, verse 7. Ephesians 6, verses 13 to 14, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Having your loins girt about with truth, by telling the truth you are putting on the new man, and are standing and withstanding the devil's assault on your life. Having on the breastplate of righteousness, we have Christ's righteousness given to us at salvation. Ephesians 6 verse 15, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Isaiah 52 verse 7, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Romans 10 verse 15, And how shall they preach, except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Ephesians 6 verses 16 to 17 above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Taking the shield of faith, these pieces of armor are for us to wield here in this life on a daily basis. The fiery darts of the wicked is the devil's or the lost attacks on our spirit and emotions that can weaken us. Take the helmet of salvation. Take your faith in the finished work of Christ with you. The sword of the spirit. God defines this for us. It is the word of God. Ephesians 6 verses 18 to 20, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly, a supernatural boldness from God to help Paul speak God's word, to make known the mystery of the gospel, that God was creating the one new man that is neither Jew nor Greek, and both would be a part of the same body by faith alone. Romans 16 verse 25, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. Galatians 3 verse 28, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. The mystery is still a mystery to many today because those who know it are not putting on the armor of God and getting in the battle and making all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. If you feel unable doing this, then send believers in your life literature like this study Bible 
that can show them what they should know as a believer. Don't sit on the sidelines. Ephesians 6 verses 21 to 22, but that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs and that he might comfort your hearts. Tychicus, he was from Asia, modern day Turkey, Acts 20 verse 4, and there accompanied him into Asia, Sopater of Berea, and of the Thessalonians, Aristarchus and Secundus, and Gaius of Derby, and Timotheus, and of Asia, Tychicus and Trophimus. He also reported on Paul's state to the church in Coloss. Colossians 4 verse 7, All my state shall Tychicus declare unto you, who is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. He was sent to Ephesus by Paul when he was rearrested. 2 Timothy 4 verse 12 and Tychicus, have I sent to Ephesus. Titus 3 verse 12, When I shall send Artemis unto thee, or Tychicus, be diligent to come unto me to Nicopolis, for I have determined there to winter. Ephesians 6 verses 23 to 24, Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Written from Rome unto the Ephesians by Tychicus. The end.